Hello everyone, my name is Drewgy Forever, and today we're playing a game called Marginalia. Marginalia? Marginalia. 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 I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to pronounce it. You can pronounce it however you want, and I'll pronounce it my way. Which will be different every time, because I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't judge me. Oh. Okay. Uh, I haven't told the story in a very long time. You'll have to forgive me if I have trouble keeping it straight. No, I don't want to forgive you. Where do we go? We just head into the woods? I don't see a path anywhere. Is there supposed to be a path? Marginalia. Marginalia. Hey, we got some blank, uh... Oh yeah, that's just hills and mountains. Alright, we'll go down this way. Hey, I see... Something. It's like a light or something down there. Something. I heard that. Stay away from me. You don't want to eat me. I'm infected with a uh, virus. Zombie virus. You'll turn into a zombie. Or at the very least get uh, HPV or something. I don't know. What's a transmittable disease? <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> I don't know any. AIDS? You'll get AIDS. I know. It's terrible. Don't joke like that, right? All the the summary of what I'm trying to say is don't eat me. Don't eat me. That's yeah. I won't taste good. I'm not good. See there was a path. How did I didn't even see it? How did that be a thing? How how why yeah, no say words. In the dead of night. I started awake when the door closed, but I drifted back to sleep immediately. I woke up covered in dew. I looked out the window to see the sun breaking over the horizon. The automobile was gone. I showered, got dressed, and took the bus to work. I can't speak today. I'm sorry. I don't I don't know what's wrong with my mouth. I am unable to speak. Droogy no speak words today. He used to have the same dream over and over again. The figure stood on a far away hilltop. It beckoned to him. I asked him if the figure always wanted him. He told me that the figure either wanted him or someone standing directly behind him. Which one is worse? Oh, it's this way. I beckoned to him. He will be at my beck and call. Sitting at my kitchen table across from an empty chair when the doorbell rang. No. Surprised, I dropped my coffee cup and it shattered on the floor. I threw the door open, expecting Eric to be there. A delivery boy with a letter stood before me. I read it to myself, moving my lips to cement it in my memory. It was a short missive. Come to me. I found it. Come to Butthead. To an address read Kesselbrook. I bought the train ticket that afternoon. Come to Butterhead. He bought a train I ticket? the lock of Eric's desk drawer five days after he left. His absence had driven me to find any and every remnant of him that I could. His notebooks were there. He scribbled constantly, privately filling volume after volume. Every few months I would catch him writing and ask him about it. 
He would smile beautifully before changing the subject. Sometimes he would refer to his history in casual conversation, never elaborating. It was strange at first, but it became our rhythm, an untold secret. So I ignored whatever was in that desk drawer until the hammer drove it open. So you found his box of secrets, eh? What was it filled with? Baseball cards? Nudie mags? On the train. Sack of marbles? His handwriting traced out the contours of the page, curving with the once wet paper in a way that made it seem like he had summoned the words from the sheets themselves. It was organized like an encyclopedia, and each entry told the story of another arcane place, object, or person. There was a record of the families who had lived on a single acre of land in the north of France. There was an oral history of a Turkish city. There were ten pages on a pitchfork that changed hands during strange moments of history. The stories refused to go here for me and I wondered why Eric had put it all together. Pitchfork? Hey, did I see something? Or was it just the way I moved down? I don't know. I thought I saw something move across my screen. Could be wrong. Probably wrong. One of the journals Eric left was devoted to Kesselbrook itself. The town the train delivered me to was not the first Kesselbrook, and the maps Eric had drawn in the journal showed that the name derived from a small valley a few miles away. At the turn of the last century, the Kessler family had struck out from nearby Allenburg because of religious persecution, although Eric's notes were unclear about what that meant. The family of eight built their cabin and barn in the spring of 1815. A year later, only five remained, and the next winter spared only the matriarch, Eileen Kessler. The trader who passed through during the summer of 1817 was the last to report seeing her alive. Maybe she ate them. That's why she was the only one alive. She ate them. No one settled in the Kesselbrook region for 50 years after the last Kessler disappeared. Erwin Pallardine's A History of the Lowland Peoples, written in 1855, has a one-paragraph entry on Kesselbrook. It ends with the sentence, Stories abound with howling and lights in the distance during the night, but not a single soul I spoke to claimed to have traveled into the valley during the past 25 years. our path about to end what's happening no path is it gonna end up here what's going on why can we jump but we can't uh, can't sprint we got jump but no sprint <laughs> I like the way he fell. That was fun. Uh oh, the music changed a little bit. Hey, I think I see a light up there. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of nothing going on. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of nothing going on. I've been walking in the woods, baby, oh, for too long. Whole oh, lot of nothing, whole oh, lot of nothing going on. Looking at the sky, I don't see nothing going on. Oh, oh, look at this. Hey, we got a valley or something. The path ended. The path ended. Is this a headstone? Are we in a graveyard? Oh, God. 
No. It's just a mini stone inch. No graveyard. Hop. 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 Like a bunny. Like a bunny. Like a bunny. What cabin? A hunter named Brian Taylor entered the clearing in the fall of 1820 to find a rotting foundation and a scorched ruin. There was no sign of Eileen Kessler. He picked through the wreckage and found nothing. No clothing, no possessions, nothing of value. There was only a clean, burned void in the middle of an empty field. Eric noted that Taylor's journal housed in the Halloran University Library, contained a short account of his journey. The hunter wrote that he felt as if someone was peering at him from the surrounding hills and had the urge to leave as fast as possible. Well, don't tell me that. Hop, hop, hop. Hopping like a bunny. I like to hop, hop, hop through the leaves and grass. I like to hop, hop, hop. What the fuck is that? Purple strings in the air. Something weird, weird, weird is going on here. Where'd they go? I saw them over there. Oh boy. Can I climb? Nope. Oh god, I'm stuck. I don't think there's anything in here. Looks very empty. Just a burned out house. Should I follow this path or should I go to the pink stuff over there? Or purple or whatever? We'll follow the path and then we'll go to that if if it doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah, there's definitely something weird going on over there. Let's see where the path goes first. So there's a light over there, and there's another building. Who knows what's going on with the building. We'll go check it out first. And then we'll go to the light. This looks pretty burnt, too. And this is a barn, I think. Who left the barn door open? What are you born in a barn? What's wrong with you people? What's wrong with you people living open my barn door like that? There's nothing in the barn. The barn is empty. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. The town of Kesselbrook was dead when my train pulled into the station. The porter told me that I had best find a room for the night. I explained that I wasn't there on vacation or business, and that I needed to find my way to the real Kesselbrook. I needed to make my way to the secluded glen where I hoped to find Eric. In retrospect, I know that I should have waited through the night, 
and I was compelled. There was something about the moon, maybe. Oh, moon. God. I was so close. The porter drew a map for me on the back of a brochure. In smudged pencil, he showed me where to turn from the main road onto the dirt road, and then where to leave the road entirely. I left the streetlights behind me and traveled into the dark. Very empty here. It's not much. Man, the guy who made Silvio should get together with this dude and they should make a horror shooter. Let this guy design like the environments and let the Silvio dude design like the voice recorders and the died several years and the shooting and stuff. Their home caught fire. Stroboscop or something. Can't remember his name. He told me that the fire engines had passed him as he was walking home, and it was only when he rounded the corner that he saw the plume of smoke blotting out the newly risen moon. Uh, I'm a little worried about whatever this is up here. I don't like it. There's no other lights. I don't see any other lights or anything. What are these? That's nuts. Alright, well, let's go through the... That's a mighty weird big rock right there. It's very odd. Shaped kind of odd, you know. Weird shadows. Alright, let's cross the Beetlejuice Bridge. Could you imagine if somebody made a Beetlejuice game? Holy shit. And made it look like this? Like a horror game? Dude, that would be so good. I mean, the perfect dude to make it would be Suda51, right? Because he could put all that goofy charm in it, but also make it horror-ish. You know? Like Shadows of the Damned, something like that. Man, I wish they'd put Shadows of the Damned on PC. That would be fucking amazing. I can't explain what drove me down the path between the trees. I felt like I was haunting that place. I knew that I needed to be there. I knew that Eric needed me. It seemed to be enough. It was in his journals. His mind revolved around Kessick Book. All the answers were there. I read the papers. But I couldn't figure out the question. Yeah, you got the answer. 42. But you need to know the question. The ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. But it's going to take way too long to calculate that. journal entry for the Raphaelites outlines a sect of traveling monks who began their order sometime in the latter half of the 16th century. Founder Tranquil Balbi claimed that he had seen a figure step from a fresco of the saints and disappear into a crowd. 
Not long after founding this group, Balbi was killed by the Italian state. His last words are quoted in several heretical texts on art from the time period. Fire is the only truth. Fire shows us another world. Sounds like a swell dude. That's just swell. I think I see another light down this way somewhere. Oh, and there's something up there. It's more of those red things on the tree. Looks like it. Should I go up there? I don't know if I should or not. We'll go up here. See what we find. Seems like there's an awful lot of them. Yeah, there's several of them. Holy crap. Okay. This place is getting weird. Weirdy. Weirdy. A few nights before Eric left, he told me that he felt like an anchor. He said that he felt like he was dragging me down. I didn't know what he meant. And all these years later, I still don't quite understand. I think I got close to figuring it out that night when I walked through the valley. I felt what he said. He was dragging me towards some dark center of the world. Sometimes I thought I could see him standing out there among the trees. When I tried to make out his shape, it was like I was peering over some vast abyssal shelf. Oh, am I at a dead end? He said when he walked through the valley, so... I walk through the valley of the shadow of death And I fear no evil Cause I'm blind to it all My mind my gun they comfort me Cause I know I'll kill my enemies when they come It's the Sean James, it's that song from uh, The Last of Us Part 2 uh, I don't see another light up here and I don't see an entrance anywhere on the rock face So maybe we were supposed to go um, up where those red lights were? I don't actually know. It seemed to be funneling me. Oh! There's a pink light up here. I don't know. It seemed to be funneling me towards this rock wall, but then... I don't know. Then it just kind of stopped. So I don't know where to go now. Oh, wow. I don't know if I go up this way or not. Oh, probably not, because it looks like, oh wow, oh well I guess I can get on the altar and let it kill me. Eric devoted more than 10 pages to a cobbled together story that he referred to as the parable. It was impossible for me to follow his references and sources but it appeared to be an origin myth for a pan-European coven of witches that had disappeared before anyone even thought about settling Kesselburg. Hey, there's bread down there. I guess I can't go down. I don't know. I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be. I have no idea. I don't think so. But it did give me a piece of the story, so I don't know. I'm confused about where I'm supposed to be right now. There's no more lights to guide me. I feel lost. Help me. 
Help me game, where am I supposed to go? Help me Rhonda, help, help me Rhonda. I don't even know if that's what that song says, I don't know the lyrics. Help me Rhonda, yeah. Something, something, something. Help me round again. Some lyrics to a Beach Boy song. I don't know many of this. I only know I get around. Because I like the message in that one. It's got a real message. Round, round, get around. I get around. Yeah, I get around. Woohoo. I get around. I get around. Actually, I don't know all the words of that one either. Okay, never mind. I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Leave me alone. Wait, what is that? All right, we got to go see this. All right, I thought there was a light back that way. There is a light up here. Oh, I thought this tree was like just in the middle of here with like nothing else around it. And I was like, oh, yeah, we got to go see what that is. But All right, there is a light up here. Let's go see what it is. I, m I might have accidentally came back around to the spot that we left. If we did, I'm going to have to go back the other way and... Yeah, we may have just came back to... Shit. Yeah. Fuck. Whoa. That tree kind of, like, just appeared. Hmm. I don't know where to go, guys. I'm super lost. Super lost, super, super lost, super lost, super, super lost, super lost, super, super lost, super lost, super, super lost. I saw a light to the left, and we are going to go towards it, but I wanted to go into this uh, valley up here. See if there was anything worth seeing. I keep hearing weird sounds. I think I've already been to this light up here, but... If the red things are here, then yep, yeah, I've already been to that light. Okay. So do we follow these? I have no idea. I don't know what the game wants me to do. I'm confused. Lost and confused and dazed. I'm dazed and lost and confused. It's a it's a new movie, a different kind of movie. It's the sequel. That's a big one. That's a big one. Don't let the rock fall on me. All right, and there's one over there. So am I going the right way or not? I have no idea. Are you asking me if I think Castlebrook is haunted? No, at least not in the way that you mean when you ask me that. Someone went there a long time ago and planted a seed. All seeds want to grow. Maybe I just follow these. I don't know. Seems to be a lot of them. What is this one? I've been given to understand that the town of Castlebrook had a hell of a time getting started. 
stillbirths plagued both the settlers and their work animals. The cultivated fields would spontaneously catch fire. Packs of wild dogs roam the streets in winter. The historical record suggests that they were driven out of the hills by competing predators, but it does not speculate on what those predators could have been. I wonder who or what changed its mind and allowed these people to catch hold and prosper, like a weed on a cliff. It's solid. Help me run again. I'm falling down this cliff. Eric's notebook is marginalia. Marginalia. On top of notes to explain how a figurehead was toppled, or to cross-reference a medallion that tore apart a family of Dutch aristocrats. The last few entries are sketches of stones or altars. I found one. Numbers pepper their faces. Their surfaces are plotted in grids that stretch out beyond them, accounting for the ground and the air between them, little points of significance in the absence of twin things. Oh god. Something's making noise. I don't like that. It's coming for me. We gotta go. Something's coming for me. Something's making noise. We gotta get out of here. Alright, it's big cliff face. We're gonna have to go this way, I think. Stop making noise. No. I'm innocent. I'm an innocent young boy. Leave me alone. I don't have any fruity pebbles. No more fruity pebbles. The sound began as a low whistle at the edge of understanding. I called out to Eric. At that moment, I could feel a strange energy on the wind, and something rushed by me. Oh, God. No. Nothing rushed by me. Don't play the pheromone. What are you doing? I felt machinery. Oh, okay. No life. It's not a pheromone. Form. Everything went dead silent, but I could hear him whispering to me. I can't. I don't. It wasn't like him. The silence was a dull hum that I fell toward the stones. I think I was screaming, but I couldn't hear myself. I, I'm screaming and no one can hear me. The Eric is whispering and telling me that everything would be okay. And I can hear this horrible gear tick, tick, ticking over and over again. I looked down and I couldn't see my hands, my feet, just this terrible nothing and a precipice that I couldn't see over. 
myself pressed against their edge and I would speak for them the storm. I was nothing and it was everything. And with my last bit of strength I spun away from the voice and the light and I hoped that I would die. This is a long journey. This is going to take forever. Is this a being? Oh wait, there's a person in that crystal. Yeah, there's someone in that. I can't see. How do I get in there? I don't know what to do. Am I dead? I don't see anything or hear anything. What happened? Oh! That's the entire story. I promise that's all. When the sun broke over the hollow, I woke up and scrambled back to the road. That's the... Told the story in the very oh, and now it started again. Okay, I guess that's Marginalia, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell that like button. You want to smash, and don't forget to subscribe. You stay you, I'll stay me. Drinky forever. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Later.